So I think we still have maybe 20 students, so we will wait for maybe two more minutes. Okay, so I think uh, there's still some students, but we should begin. Okay, let's start. So we were talking about, uh, uh, previously we talked about a physical layer, right? How to encode the bits using the uh, analog signals, okay? And uh, so uh, then we, we enter the data link uh, slide. Okay, we will have two slides, by the way, right? So, and uh, uh, so, this, uh, so for the data link, we have two slides. The first slide associated with, uh, you know, also the physical link, uh, layer, right? These two slides will be one, one quiz, okay? So that's the data link layer, which is a little bit uh, more, uh, you know, having more content, okay? That will be another quiz. So for today, I will uh, finish this slide and then we will release another quiz, right? Okay, let's begin. So uh, in the data link layer, uh, last time we talked about one particular topic, that is uh, how to delineate different frames, right? Because you have uh, the bits on the wire, okay? So you wanna in, in insert, you know, some kind of special tokens, right? Uh, to, to delineate different frames, okay? Uh, we talked about several different methods, right? So like this kind of bit oriented, there's also byte oriented. And for high speed case, we, we need a synchronization. So we have the clock base. So I will not repeat that, but I, I, I hope you have an impression of what we covered last time. And then uh, we talk about how to deal with noise, right? Because, you know, uh, the data can be corrupted during the transmission of the link, right? So for example, some bits can be flipped, okay? So how, how can we recover the errors, right? So of course, if you, so there are two questions. One is how can we detect, okay? If there's something wrong, we need to know it's wrong. We don't pass to the down, uh, you know, downstream tasks, okay? We need to at least ask for a retransmission, right? But sometimes we can actually recover the error, right? So we know that bit is flipped and uh, flip it back, okay? So this is called a uh, recover. So we have two levels. One is detect, one is recover, okay? And uh, so as we said, like by naive error detection is using this kind of, uh, Byzantine for torrent method, right? You re do redundant transmission or do the redundant computation, right? So, and then compare whether they are the same, right? For here, because it's networking, it's redundant transmission, okay? And then compare the content, right? And if you are doing like a computation, right? So then you are do two, run two jobs at the same time, it's compare with the results, okay? And so this is kind of uh, being Byzantine for torrent, okay? 
And uh, this is very wasteful, of course, right? Unless you are in the outer space, you cannot avoid that. You, you have to do some redundancy, right? Okay. And uh, if it's, it's a, the failure is very costly, okay? But in our case, actually, a small bit error at least uh, cause your, your computer to crash and you re reboot, right? That's not a big deal, unlike, uh, you know, spacecraft uh, crashed, okay? So in reality, we use, uh, you know, other schemes like checks and we'll talk about later, okay? So the first scheme is called uh, uh, parent bits, right? So uh, what does that mean? Okay, so we, we have seen that this is the first, right? So we will use uh, ask, ASCII characters, okay? ASCII characters are seven bits, right? So, and so this will be some character, like some, some letters on a keyboard, something like that, okay? Right. And uh, you, you don't have too many keys, so seven bits is enough. And then we will append another bit, right? So how do we append this bit? We will count how many ones are there, right? If there are three ones, which is a odd number, right? We want to add another one in the eighth bit to make it even, okay? You always make, uh, make the number once even, okay? After coding, right? Here we have four ones, okay? And we append a zero. And again, five ones, which is odd, we add a one, okay? And three, so we add a one. And three, one. Okay. But if we have four or we have six, then we add a zero, right? So why is this useful? This can detect one bit error, okay? We, we call it a detect, we're not, not, not saying we can fix, right? We, we are not able to occur. The reason is very simple, right? So for example, if somehow this bit, let's consider this now, okay, this block. Somehow this bit is flipped, flipped to one. Now we previously required the number of ones to be even. Now because of this bit is flipped, right? So it, there are five ones, okay, it's all. So it's, it's wrong, okay? Which means this byte is corrupted, okay? So we have to drop it, maybe drop it, even the whole frame, okay? So this is uh, the idea. Okay. So you can see any bit is, as that's wrong, right? It will uh, affect the uh, odd or even, you know, parity of the number, okay? So as long as there's only one bit, we can fix it, right? But if there are two bits, you cannot fix it already, right? So we have, for example, here we have Five ones plus one is six, which is even, right? So uh, if in a consecutive of seven bits, one bit is wrong, right? You can find it, right? And even if this parent bit is wrong, you can also find it, right? Because for example, we have three ones and we should put it in one, right? If somehow this is zero, then it's still not even. Okay? It's a three, it's an odd number. But we will be able to find it as long as there's only one bit that is wrong, okay? I mean, the, the detect. But we don't know which bit is wrong. Right? It could be this bit flipped, also this bit flipped. Right? But as long as there's some one bit that is flipped, we will detect it. Okay? This is a parallel bit idea. Right. So, uh, but this is not reliable against burst errors. Right? As I said, if you have two consecutive bits that is wrong, or four consecutive bits that are flipped, right? then there's no way that can protect you. For example, if you have a burst signal right? and the flip is all four to uh, one zero zero zero, okay? Then you know, it's, 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 because there are four numbers to cancel, right, in some sense, okay? For example, now we still have, uh, you know, let me see. Yeah, so you, you can see zero, one, zero, 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 right? So we only have one ones and we append one, which is still here. But actually we have four bits, to okay? So as long as there's a birthday flip, uh, error, right? then we are in trouble. So uh, a more robust method that can tolerate maybe a little bit more bits, okay, is the two-dimensional parity coding, okay? So what does this mean? So here, uh, let me make it clear that your, your packet is something like this. First this row, this row, this row, this row, this row. Okay, they are one string, by the way, okay? But let's say in our parity check hardware, we will, we will kind of cut here and put it into the second row, and cut here, third row, okay? So something like this. And then our hardware will compute the parity, okay? On each, let me clear joints, okay? Uh, on each row and each column. For example, for this row, right, we have three ones, one, 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 okay? So that's why we add a fourth one. So that this row becomes even for four, right? So four ones, okay? And similarly, let's consider this column, right? So this column. So you can see there's a one, 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 that's three ones. So, 
So we need to make it even with other number. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at this column, which has four ones, right? So this is here. Right? So basically, once you uh, once you receive a packet, you make them layout like in this two D layout, and then can compute each row, each column, right? So and compute a parity. Right. Of course, if you know this is margin, right? So uh, you can compute a you know the parity of this final column or final row. They will be the same, okay? Right? Because it, it's equal to all their parities, right? Because this is kind of a parity of this in some sense. So, so they have a guarantee that they will be the same. Okay. So uh, this is called for example four ones, this is six ones, so this will be zero. Okay. And so this is parity bit for each row. This is parity bit for each column, and this parity bit for this entire entire numbers. Okay. And uh, so this scheme actually can detect up to three bit errors. Okay. So if you have burst errors, that's fine, right? As long as the signal is not too too long, three bits, we can detect it. Okay. Uh, and some four bit error, we can also detect. It. Okay. And more than that, we have no guarantee. Okay. And uh, so, so which means some four bit errors we, we cannot detect. Okay. And we're talking about detect, right? So we can also recur one bit error. Okay. So we'll see why shortly in, in the animation. Okay. Another thing you need to pay attention to that the overhead is not high, but we have some overhead, right? So you think about this is the actual content you want. Okay. This is additional overhead. Okay. So if you compute the ratio, it will be 14%, right? So this is acceptable, right? So you pay a little bit overhead to make sure the, the bits are correct, okay? Now let's see why we can, we can actually recover one bit error, right? You think about this bit, okay? If this bit originally is zero, now it's flipped to one, okay? If we flip it to one, what will happen, right? So this row now, you know, have four, four, ones, right, previous three. Now we have four ones, this should be zero, right, because we want the whole row to be even, but it's one. So we know this, this row has an error, okay? And similarly, if you look at this column, right, we have one, two, three, four, four ones, right? So this should be zero, but it's one, right? So it's one because previously this bit is zero. So we can identify, if we know exactly only one bit is flipped in this pack, right, we can just fix it, right? So the reason is very simple. We know, hey, this is the third column, right? This is the fourth row. We can identify exactly this bit using the coordinates. Right? It's like an X and a Y coordinate, right? So if one bit error, we can just fix it. We don't even need to retransmission, right? But what if you know you have a second bit that's flipped? Let's say on the same row here, okay? And uh, so if this is flipped again, you know you flip twice, so this will not be able to detect, right? So you, you don't don't know what it's wrong, okay? Because you have two bits flipped. But we will be able to detect this bit is wrong, right? So if you look at one, 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 four, one, this should be zero, right? So it's one. Okay. This is because previously this number is zero, okay? And now you 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 can you cannot know where you know what what is wrong, but you know that uh, something is wrong. Right? For example, if you flip these two bits, so let me take it. Okay? For example, instead of these two, right? These two let's recover them, but you flip these two bits, right? It will be the same, okay? So this number is also correct, right? This is also correct, but these two bits are wrong, okay? So you, you don't know which two bits, even which row are wrong, okay? You just know which columns are wrong. Right? So the, this column has some, some bits wrong, and this column has some bits wrong, okay? So you can still detect two bit errors, okay? Now let's assume the three bit errors, right? And uh, when you, you are in the same row or in the same column, this is the easiest way, right? To, uh, so this is the most difficult way. Right, if they are all in different row and columns, right, then you can easily detect and recover them. Right? It's like different coordinates. Right? But if you have two that have the same coordinate, that's why we are considering those boundary bits. Okay? Because in the same row or column, if you flip twice or four times, right, it flips back to, to, so that you don't know it's wrong. Okay? Right. Now let's assume this bit is flipped here, okay? which means this column, now you can no longer detect there's something wrong. But you will be able to find, hey, this row is wrong. Right? So you can show that any three bit flips, okay? This is the most uh, difficult bit. You have all something that the same row and same column. Right? So any three bit errors, whether they are consecutive or not consecutive, okay, you will always be able to detect, right? 
But if you have a fourth bit, there's no guarantee you will detect it, right? For example, if you think about the last bit one becomes zero, right? And uh, so what will happen is, uh, you know, in, you, in this row, you flip two bits, okay? So it, it, you cannot detect, right? Because flips back, okay? In this row also flip two bits, you cannot detect, okay? And this column, this column also flipped twice, right? So you flip it back, okay? So you don't even know there's an error here. Right? So in four bits, like in this particular special case, you cannot detect uh, error, okay? You will think it's a correct uh, frame and you pass it along. Any questions here? If not, I, I will continue. Okay. So next is a checksum. Checksum actually what is uh, most widely used, right? So uh, uh, it's used in TCP, UDP, and IP. Okay. So that, the idea is very simple. Let's say we have a start, uh, you know, uh, Sentinel and end Sentinel. Okay. And this is the payload data. But after the data, we will append another summation of the bytes, right? So it may not be bytes, it could be a unit of two bytes, right? A short integer, right? So here, for example, we have a, a 16 bits, right? So, so for the checksum, right? So you have two bytes plus two bytes plus two bytes all over the data, and then finally sum up and give the checksum, right? So you can easily see that if some bit is wrong, right? And the checksum will be wrong, right? And then we will drop this and ask for a retransmission. So we are just going to use one's complement arithmetic to do the summation, okay? Which means you just a one add one to zero, zero add one to one, okay? So something like that. zero add zero to zero. Okay? So this is a simple addition in binary form, okay? And uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, this overhead is very low, right? No matter how large your data is, you know, the whole frame, you only have two bytes, right, 16 bits of checksum, okay? But it's not very resistant to errors, right? For example, you have, uh, you, have you know, you have multiple errors that can flip back, right? And then your checksum, uh, you know, happen to be the same sum, that's possible, okay? So it's not very safe, but it can work on the entire frame. You just give one checksum, right? Of course, if checksum is wrong, there must be something wrong, right? Okay, if it's correct, checksum must be correct. But maybe you have something wrong, but they cancel out. So checksum is still crap. Right? So, so this is not very resilient. And here's the example. Right? So uh, let's say we have two bytes and we have the sum. Right? If you have two, two bits flipped, right? So previously this position is zero plus one. Now it flips them to be one plus zero. It's the same sum, okay? So it's, uh, it's, it's useful, right? But there's uh, some uh, coincidence that can happen that you, you cannot detect the error. Okay. So the, uh, another uh, very popular solution is called a cyclic redundancy check. But it's uh, mathematically intensive, right? So you, you basically do a division so that you know, if you divide by some numbers, you will find a number that you do a division. Okay. Let's say you have uh, uh, 10, uh, for example, you have uh, 11 divided by five, right? This equal to two, but you have a remainder of one. Right? So this is a remainder, okay? So by, by five, you, you can have a remainder from zero, one, all the way to four, right? So that means using the remainder, okay? If there's something wrong, the remainder will not be exactly that number you want, right? If it's correct, you're doing the division, you will have that exact number. And this remainder can be up to 32 bits, okay? So there's only one in two power, to the power 32 chance you will miss an error, okay? In CRC scheme, okay? Uh, and this is, is very quick to implement in hardware. And, uh, you know, uh, and this is, it's just like checksum. You have a fixed size uh, per frame, let's say four bytes, okay? But again, so this is based on the field theory, right? So, you know, the group field is kind of, uh, group series, this kind of stuff. Right? So uh, very difficult, right? It's uh, advanced and number theory. Okay, so uh, again, so a lot of textbook will ask you to do this kind of division calculation, but I think uh, as long as you know it, that's good enough. Okay, we will skip the details. If you are interested, you are welcome to look at the textbook and uh, also the Wikipedia. Okay, they contain the CRC details.
So next is about you know reliability. Okay. So how does the sender know that a frame is was received? Right? So for example, I send something, right? And if I just push things out, I don't get any acknowledgement or response. I never know whether the receiver truly receive it or it's somehow like a dropped in the middle, right? like in the router. Okay. And because we, we can have errors, right? So it can maybe never arrive. And uh, if we have errors, for example, the receiver will receive it, but will drop it, right? So, so how do we know that, uh, in, in other words, the, the frame is sent to the receiver, okay? Because we are in the data link layer, okay? we call it frame, okay? The frame is sent to deliver to the receiver, okay? Uh, and because we are in the data link layer, we don't have the router, but there could be other reasons. Maybe we have an error, okay? And the receiver will drop it, okay? And, and in that case, for example, but we, this solution here works beyond the data link layer. We will see it. Okay. So how, how do we know the packet is uh, successfully arrived at the receiver? Right? Receiver received the correct packet. Okay. Not only receive it, but it's correct. So the, the only way is as receiver to acknowledge to you. Right. So the data frame could be a, a, a lot of bits. Right? So acknowledge can be just a small, small uh, signal. Right. Uh, maybe one byte is even that. Right. So. Uh, so, but you need a dodge from the receiver. Right? Receiver will check, hey, the content is correct, I will send it, right? If the content is not correct, we will send something uh, in back, et cetera, okay? We'll ask the sender to reach us. So there will be, you know, acknowledgement. And once the sender receives that, the sender knows this frame is properly sent, okay? And then the sender can drop this frame. I mean, it's, it's useless, right? We will not need a retransmission. So the simplest uh, solution uh, for the transmission is called the stop and the wait scheme, okay? So how do you do that, right? So, it's, so you expect, for example, you expect the sending time should not be very long, right? So let's say sending time should be this, uh, by the way, this axis is the time, okay? Sending time should be this long, right? But I will just wait a little bit longer, right? Maybe three times longer, 10 times longer, okay? If still you don't get it, any acknowledgement, then if, there must be something wrong, okay? The sender will like a quit itself. Right? So the receiver, if normally, even if there's some, some delay, it will be received within the time window, okay? So what if, for example, a send and this frame somehow get dropped, okay? Or uh, there's some error, the receiver didn't respond to you, okay? Then it responded to you that it's a receiver correct time. In that case, the timeout will happen, maybe 10 times longer than the normal receiving time. Okay? And then you, you need to retransmit again. Okay? And only when you get to the acknowledgement, you can drop the frame. Okay? Uh, otherwise, you have to code it and until you get an ACK. If you don't get an ACK after maybe uh, much, much longer than the normal receiving time, okay? you will retransmit. And hopefully this time it will get an ACK. Okay? If not, you will repeat this. Right? And as a timeout window may also increase or decrease, and we will see that in TCP in the transport layer. Here we are talking about the, you know, uh, the link layer. Okay, the so link layer, for example, Bluetooth is using this scheme. Okay, you send, and if the other side says, "Hey, I received it," then you send again. Okay, so Bluetooth is fine because if you know Bluetooth, right, the distance, the physical distance between sender and receiver is very sharp. So this is totally okay, right? But for some protocols, this is not acceptable, okay? But we will see it later, okay? So especially if you think about sending a packet from the uh, East Coast to the West Coast. Right? So this is a long distance. And uh, if we, you know, the, the propagation delay is long, right? If you just send the packet, uh, one packet, and it is, one round trip will take too long time, okay? And so we will have some solutions. So what, what, what's the problem, right? So the utilization is not that high, okay? Uh, we can only have one frame in flight at any time, which means, for example, if you look at uh, all this period of time, right? I only have one frame, okay? But by this time, I can actually put another frame here, another frame here, another frame here, another frame here, right? But frankly speaking, for example, assume we, we can put the uh, six frame during this period of time, right? And they can then, uh, propagate in the same medium, right? So it will be received altogether in the receiver side like this, okay? But 
but unfortunately, because we only send one and then we wait to acknowledge, right? So the bandwidth for the others, these are kind of wasted. Okay, it's idle, right? So this is a problem that we are facing with a stop and wait scheme. Okay. So here's a simple calculation, right? So you think about we have 10 millisecond delay, right? So let's say you send a packet from East Coast to West Coast, right? You in, in the TCP layer, right? So so of course this will happen, right? So and uh, here, you know, we are talking about uh, a data link layer, right? So you think about a 10 Gbps link, okay? Right, so we, we probably will make it larger because then if the bandwidth is wider right, and you are wasting more, okay? So we are see the utilization is lower, okay? So usually, you know, Ethernet uh, high end is 10 Gbps, uh, low end is 1 Gbps, now, okay? And this is a, the bandwidth of the link, right? So what we're talking about is how wide you can send, right? Or, or in other words, how, how fast you can put your the packet onto this wire, okay? Right. So this is a 10 Gbps, maybe, okay? Uh, one Gbps maybe maybe slower, okay? You can put a, a bit and then a bit, a bit, okay? Now we have very wide bandwidth, okay? We, we can put it really fast onto the wire, okay? And there's also a delay of 10, 10 milliseconds, right? So the delay could be, hey, this is five milliseconds, Second, then we get it right. So you can put it very fast, and just like what you watch the YouTube video, bandwidth high, even though you have some two min two second delay, you don't care, you still watch the same video, okay? Right, but but here, if you use a stop and wait scheme, you're in trouble, right? So let's see why. Firstly, let's think about you know, let's think about within this time millisecond delay, this period, right? The delay. How many, uh, how many bits actually can put on this wire? Okay, so let, let's do a simple calculation, right? So that's why we need you to do the mass questions earlier, right? So then you know you have the concept. Okay, so you can see that we actually need a uh, 100 million bits, okay, to fill the pipe. Why? Because this is a 10 G, right? 10, 1 G is uh, you know, 1 G is really a thousand million, right? Okay. And uh, so then this is a thousand million bits per second, okay? This is how fast you can put onto this one, right? And then now we have 10 millisecond delay, right? 10 millisecond is 0 0.01, okay? Second, right? So because, you know, uh, 0 0.0001 is one minute, okay? Now, you know, you can put so many M bits, right? In each second, but in one percent of a second, right? You can put at least a hundred, right? Because it's one percent per so, okay? so this is one million bits. Okay, that means within this this small period of time, you can put one hundred million bit. Okay, one hundred million bit. Okay, so this is how we get the first part. Right? But let's see what's the actual utilization. Right, so. Uh, we, we assume that the packets, each packet is of size, uh, you know, uh, 1.5 KB. Okay, just B is a byte, by the way. So usually we say packet, we, in the computer, it's still byte, but when we put on the wire, it's bit. Okay, when we talk about link, it's a uh, bit per second. Okay, so now because it is a byte, we time eight becomes a bit, right? Okay, so this is the size, how many bits in a packet, right? But we know that, you know, we can put so many bits, right? We can put so many bits, but we only have so many bits, right? So many bits, right? So again, so we, it seems that there's a time uh, million delay here, it means end-to-end uh, -end delay, right? Which means 10 million, 10 million. If you get acknowledgement, it will be 20 million, right? So, so this period of time is kind of like 20 million, right? So, to, uh, so if you, you think about What's your speed of putting things to this line on average? It's just a one pack, right? You, you have one pack to put there. Let me, let me okay. So I just put in one pack with so many bits, right? You throw one pack here and you wait for 20, 20 milliseconds, okay? So if you look at what's your BPS, right? BPS, bits per second. So this is your uh, actual on average uh, bit per second. So you will compute 
do the division. Of course, this, will, this is M, MS, right? So you, you do need to turn something back, okay? That's why you have K here, right? So finally, we'll compute, this is only 600K BPS, right? I hope this is not too, too difficult to see. Okay, so yeah, so this is the actual packet you put on this thing. And this is, uh, uh, this is 10 millisecond uh, to, to the receiver, 10, 10 millisecond back. Okay, and you compute this, you will get C, right? So this is M becomes a K, okay, up there, right? so because divided by a million, okay? And the other numbers you can calculate will get C, okay? But actually you can put so many, right? So many into the pipe, okay? So the utilization rate is really, you know, if you divide this number by this number, you can see that the utilization rate really low, okay, less than 1%, right? So that's our problem. Okay, even if I, I have a 10 GBPS link, I, I'm just using 1% or even less. Right? So I'm using uh, 100 megabits per second. Okay, right? so, so giving you a high speed of link is not so useful. High bandwidth link is not so useful. Okay. So actually the solution to this is to use a sliding window solution, which is actually used by TCP in the transport layer. Okay? But we are talking about the data link layer. I think the Ethernet is probably using the same. So we allow multiple outstanding unapologetic frames, right? So instead of, hey, I send one, I need you to acknowledge. I will allow, for example, a window of four, right? And this window size can change. This is called congestion control. So we'll see that later in this, okay? Let's assume we have a fixed window size four, right? So in this time, you know, even though you are receiving, you are waiting for the problem, right? But you are utilizing at least a certain fraction of the, the the time here, okay? Right, so then you, are, you have much less waste, okay? And uh, so this is called sliding window method. And of course, you, you have to remember the four packets because they may, they may have no acknowledgement and timeout also. And so the window size is kind of like the memory you need to hold for, for, this, for the packets, okay? And committed packets, right? uh, packets. Right. So these are the, the frames. Mm -hmm. uh, that is allowed, it's called a window. If you allow more, then you can feel more. Right. Okay. So this is the idea uh, to solve the previous problem. Any questions? So this concept is very important, by the way. Okay. okay, if you have no question, we will continue, right? So this scheme is used by TCP and we will look at the details later. And TCP also adjusts window size depending on, you know, congestion conditions, okay? Right. If you, you know, you can, you have no congestion, then I will increase the window size gradually, by right, one at a time, for example, okay? But in case we find, hey, some economy is not there, right, we will shrink the window by half, right? because, you know, increasing, then you each, each time you emit more packets, it's useless, right? because most of them will, will not be delivered because uh, router may drop them, and uh, we need to retransmit, and this becomes a vicious cycle. And uh, so should we uh, do error check in the data link layer? Right. If you remember, we, we have the end-to-end -end agreement in the very early lecture we mentioned, right? So uh, maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe, maybe if you can do that in the application layer, right? And transport layer, we have the checksum, right? So maybe a simple checksum, we, uh, we can do that in IP layer, we can also do that in TCP layer, et cetera. But, if you, you have a lot of comp complicated stuff that is more ex expensive to do by the hardware and the protocol low in, at the lower level, right? You probably want to avoid it, okay? So really because, you know, error free transmission cannot be guaranteed. As we said, you, you may still have the correct checksum or parity bit, right? But it's just because the error cancels, right? So you cannot see the difference, but actually the bits are correct. So you cannot guarantee it anyway. Your application need to, well, when you use it, see some, some content is unreadable, you need to ask for retransmission later anyway, okay? So also not all applications want this functionality, right? So for example, if you are uh, watching a YouTube video and some of the frame has some bits, like uh, the color is corrupted, right? From red to green, by right? Some pixels, that's fine, okay? You, it will not cause your problem, right? So, and so you don't even need uh, to advance the, you know, retransmission stuff, okay? And, uh, you know, there's, 
you know, there's overhead, right? So when you do these checkings, like even the checksum, you need to compute the summation, right? Even though it's it's probably in your network interface card, it's doing the the hardware summation very fast, right? But it still has overhead, right? Previously, maybe you can forward it in one nanosecond. You probably now need a ten nanosecond, okay, or even more. And then you have, you know, error recovery, right? This is even more complicated because you need a buffer, right? So you need a, the, you know, for TCP it's fine because it's transport layer right below the application layer. Uh, sorry, let me see. Okay. I think there was some signal issue, okay? So that's fine, right? But it, as, as something like a link, data link layer, probably I, I don't want a so complicated buffer. Like, like the, the stop weight is fine, but you know, if uh, you need a sliding window, but if the window can even change its size, then the hardware will not be able to handle it. It's too complicated. Right? You need to run instructions like in the programs, okay, to do that. Right? And so there are, these are the cons, right? So there are also uh, pros. The, the simplest uh, uh, you know, reason is that you know, it can give better performance, right? Because these are the hardware, okay? Hardware means you just propagate the input signals and the hardware do, do the uh, light speed calculation and the, send out the output, okay? If you are doing that in computer, you, you need to have a program which translate to assembly language and then becomes the machine instructions. And these instructions one, maybe one clock, right? So even maybe each one is very fast, but you may translate to maybe a hundred instructions, okay? That's much slow. So data link error checking in practice uh, is, you know, uh, you know, mostly used in Wi-Fi or, you know, the 4G, this kind of, Links, right? Because you know it's a, it's lossy links. And so if you do that in very high quality, you know, Ethernet widely, it may not make too much sense. Okay. Of course, if you have the cellular, you have the satellite. Right. So satellite also needs some protocol that can fix it, make do more checking. Okay. But if th this really depends on how likely there will be an error, right? So uh, if you use satellite, maybe there are so many electron. Um, um, electromagnetic signals in the universe, right? So somehow your bits are like a flipped array, maybe a hundred packets or uh, 10,000 packets, right? That's really high frequency, right? You need to have some better way to be tolerant to that, right? But if your bits is never flipped, right? So if in one year, if you transmit between your two devices in your home, right? So uh, maybe you connect to an ethernet switch, right? So maybe in one year, you will only have one bit flip, right? So then why do so many check-ins, right? Most of the time you are good. In the worst case, you just reboot your computer right, if something is wrong. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, the next slide we will discuss uh, more on data link layer, but you know, so this completes the first uh, slide. And this slide uh, combined with the physical layer, we will have a quiz. Okay, we will see that. Right. So uh, before we move on, maybe we can take attendance. Let me see. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, we will do the same, but we will sample a little bit more than last time. Right? Last time, because we don't have too much time left, we, we just sampled the three at each. Okay. This time we will sample. Okay. Uh, Prince? Prince, yes. are you here? Okay. Yes. Alex? Alex, are you here? Alex? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, Joe? Joe, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Matt, Matt, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Cass, Cass, are you here? Cass? Uh, Cass from uh, Franchelle. I, I hope I pronounced So she's here. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Karim, Karim, are you here? I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Jackson, Jackson, are you here? Jackson? No. Amanda? Amanda, are you here? Hey, Jessica Clayton's here. I just could get my mic to work. 
Uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I was calling Jackson. I right? thought. So, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks. No worries. Amanda, Amanda, are you here? Amanda Kinley? No? Uh, uh, tr Trina, Trina Lin, are you here? I see a chat. Okay. I, I think, uh, do I miss someone? Maybe someone is here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let me. Uh, Brookie, Brookie, are you here? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, are you here? Sarah Newton? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Daniel, Daniel, are you here? Daniel? Trina said she's here, actually. Oh, uh, who is here? I think Jackson and Amanda was uh, not not answering. Hey, uh, D Daniel's my friend. He said he had to leave early. Uh, okay. Can oh, I'm right here. Oh, I'm okay. Here. Daniel's here. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah, if you are here, just let me know. Okay, uh, right now it's Amanda and uh, you know Jackson. Okay. And uh, uh, Raj, Raj, are you here? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, ah, Avine, Avine, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, are you here? I'm here. Thank you. Ahmed, Ahmed, are you here? Ahmed Smith? No? Uh, uh, Brana, Brana, are you here? Brana? Brana? She said it, she said it. Oh, okay. She's here. I see, I see, yeah, yeah, so because I, the, the, the blade ID is not easy to recognize. Okay, okay if you are missed someone, just let me know. Okay. Uh, Amanti, Amanti, are you here? Amanti? Amanti? No? Uh, Matthew, Matthew, are you here? Here. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ebony, Ebony, are you here? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence, are you here? Lawrence? Lawrence? No? Uh, Arohan, Arohan, are you here? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Lindsay, Lindsay, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Anissa. Anissa? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, thank you. So that's that's a sample of the attendance. Okay. Right, let's continue with the next uh, uh, next slide. We will just uh, maybe talk for a couple of minutes and then uh, we'll end this. Part. Just to have a beginning of this slide. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see a chat. Okay. Uh, I think Amanda was here, right? so let, let me let me fix it. So if you are here, just let me know. Okay, maybe I missed your chat. Okay. All right. So uh, this is the next data link slide. Okay. So we will be talking about media itself. Right. So the so, so, let me fix it, Amanda. The concept of media access is really, you know, for example, how you control the media that is shared, right? Because a lot of folks may be uh, back to the same some that and the same piece of media, especially like the wireless, like Wi-Fi, this kind of, okay? And uh, uh, yeah, I, I fixed the Amanda as a kind of, okay, on the other screen. And uh, so if, let's say two people are talking in, in the same piece of ear, right? So then we, we are in trouble. Okay, the messages. Okay. 
So Ethernet and Wi-Fi are both multi-access technology. Because you think about you, you many machines, right? So let's say all the uh, machines in your lab classroom connect to the same Ethernet switch, okay? And uh, all students using the same laptop connect to the same wireless router in the classroom, right? So they are the same piece of media, right? And if you can think about them as using the same wire in some sense, but actually we need uh, some other device, right? whether it's the Ethernet switch or wireless router. Okay, so, so this is called the broadcast media, right? Shared by many hosts, okay? And uh, like, like uh, for example, for wireless, right? Ethernet switch these days is, you know, the switch is a lot more advanced, right? It will guarantee you your packet not seen by others, okay? It's unlike how, okay? And uh, so it's more about the air, right? So the air usually, you know, in Wi-Fi, no one can talk, talk together, okay? And uh, so simultaneous transmission will cause collisions, right? And it destroys the data. Let's say you send one, another people also send one, and uh, you send zero, another people send one, and all you see is one, okay? Right. And uh, so uh, we need a protocol to handle that, right? So this is called a media access control, okay? And MAC protocol, okay? And we also have the MAC address, right? So each one has a unique address and the only one, uh, you know, because you can put the address in your packet, right? so only one person can talk at a time, right? And so this, these are the rules on how to share the same piece of media. Right? If you are separated by like a, a switch, right, or you are separated by a router, that's fine. Right? If you are in the same end, okay, in the same subnet, you need to uh, have a protocol to control how to share the same media. It's like the same piece of metal, right? so uh, you can think about it, but wireless is more like the air. And you need to have strategy to detect and avoid uh, the collisions, right? Okay. And you also might want to recover from the collisions. Let's say, unfortunately, you, you send out and other people are also talking, right? And you are also talking. Then so you need to wait for a while and we talk, right? talk again. And uh, so, strategy for media access. So, we, we, firstly, we can partition the channels, right? Different people using different small pieces of channels, right? So, let's say, the easiest way to think about it is, let's say, every four seconds, right? I let one people, we have four users. You are talking in the first second, then another person can talk in the second second, uh, something like this. And then the fifth second, you can talk again, right? something like this. So this is called a ch channel partitioning, okay? So this divides the results into small pieces and allocate each piece to one host, right? So when it's your turn, you send, okay? So this is called a time division, multi sets right? set it. There's also another more advanced way that everyone can talk together, but you know, how much you can talk, how fast you can put your voice onto the wall, right? So that, that matters because if it's a voice, it's fine, right? So you don't talk so fast, but it's data then it's right, very matter. So everyone use a small frequency band, right? So the whole frequency band is shared by everyone, right? So you use a low frequency band, and other people use high frequency band, right? Of course, if you can use all the frequency band, you can put your data onto the into the air, for example, more more efficient. Okay, but you can you can share the frequency band, right? not just the time. Okay, time is like the horizontal dimension. Frequency band is more like the bandwidth, right? The, how width, how wide uh, your channel is, right? It's a uh, the, the vertical dimension. Okay, there are also take turns protocol where you you will have a token. Right? So there's a co coordination. Right? So it's a, called a token ring network. It's like you have a token and you talk, and then you pass a token to another person, and only when somebody receives the token he will talk or she will talk, right? So uh, then no one will talk together because there's only one token, okay? Another method is called, uh, you know, contention, right? So this means a lot of collision, like uh, if a group of people are trying to talk, right? Maybe two people talk together, right? And then you find, hey, the other people also talking. I, I was back off, are you first, you know, right? And then, uh, you know, you wait for a while and talk, right? So these are more like the old Ethernet uh, switch, right? These days, new Ethernet switch, is more advanced, you don't have this issue, okay? And Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is still like that because the air is shared by all the laptops, okay? Yeah, so that particularly uh, begin our, you know, uh, uh, Mac protocols, okay? And that's all for today. We will continue with uh, the, this Mac control uh, from, you know, um, in Western, okay? Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so I see some chat. Oh, the midterms. The midterm will be, I think, uh, either end of 
February or early, uh, early March, okay? We, we still have a few slides, maybe three slides. Okay, after that, we will have a meeting. Midterm will be not so difficult. It will just be the, uh, like in the quiz form, okay, the questions and you answer them. Right? So, so, yeah, it will not be that difficult. As long as you follow our lecture and do the quiz well, you, midterm should not be difficult for you. And we will probably go through what, what particular things we are covering uh, in, in the midterm so that you will not have to look at everything. Right? So we'll, we'll do that before the uh, midterm, okay. Is there a specific slide that the mass quiz is based on? Oh, so the, the mass quiz is based on, uh, I think I, I covered that earlier, right? So let me, let me do that again, okay. Uh, by the way, so I'm answering questions. So our lecture ends. If you don't have questions, feel free to leave, okay? You don't have to stay. Uh, so, yes, there will only be one midterm and one final one. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if you still remember, we have a slide right, and uh, we shared also on cameras. Okay. Uh, so this slide, right, so uh, I hope you can see it. Okay, so this slide and we have uh, some calculation. Okay, so it's uh, like, Starting from here, we are talking about the formulas, and how to calculate all those concepts, right? especially this slide, and then later we talk about this, this formula, okay? So the mass quiz is all based on this. Right? And today we also have some calculation we talked about, right? so like uh, the, the window, right? why we need the window, why the utilization rate is low, right? these actually are all random, okay? Uh, do you answer your questions? I think the question was asked. Let me see. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Okay, if you have no more questions, uh, I will end because we, we passed three minutes, right? So I don't want to delay you. And uh, feel free to email me uh, and the TAs with your questions, okay? Thank you, have a nice day. Uh, the slide will be, uh, the, the, the slide I will check whether it's already there. Okay. And uh, if not, I will put on canvas and the, the video will be there. Okay. Maybe in two hours. Thank you.